Right now, I'm joined by Victor and Kiran, who um, who are co-founders of Block Apps. They recently had a partnership with Microsoft, so I so we'd like to cover what what they are building. So, could you introduce yourself first? We'll start with Victor. Sure, I'm the CEO and founder of Block Apps. Um, I'm an experienced tech entrepreneur. I've been the technical co-founder of several startups. Hi, I'm Kieran. I'm Block Apps chief data scientist and uh, also a PhD student at UC Berkeley. So, what exactly is Block Apps? So Block Apps is an Ethereum blockchain as a service that allows you to rapidly deploy private blockchains and also build and prototype uh, blockchain applications on those blockchains. Something to add? Yeah, the focus of Block Apps is uh, ease of use and modularity. Um, we've defined an interface so that uh, when you create an application, you can interface with public blockchains, private blockchains, many blockchains at once, uh, just by simply switching a URL. Uh, we have components like uh, wallets, uh, RESTful API that separately uh, scaffold an application, but individually can be used without any dependence on the others. Okay, so so yesterday it was announced that um, like Microsoft is developing blockchain as a service on yes. Azure. And uh, yeah, the block apps uh, tools are part of part of that blockchain as a service. So first, we'd like to ask, what is blockchain as a service, mm -hmm. and what is your what does your partnership with Microsoft entail? Right. So blockchain as a service is basically we want to take advantage of the Microsoft Azure platform, at least initially, to rapidly launch. Um, new nodes on private blockchains. And what this allows you to do is typically, right now in the Ethereum world, it's quite difficult to set up a new node. You have to compile the Go or C++ clients and kind of work with that. Typically, that takes a couple of days to set up. But now, with Azure, you can kind of launch this in minutes. Now, once you have that launched, usually most businesses want to see they want to start building on something right away. And we've provided an entire set of tools so businesses and individual developers can just start using the tools and building applications almost immediately. Yeah, just to reiterate, uh, the Azure process is extremely pain-free. Uh, it's a single click. Uh, you wait maybe 30 seconds. An instance is up. You're running. And you head straight to the documentation, download the tools, and you start building right away. And the turnaround time previous to that was, again, on the order of days. So uh, we've created a very simple environment so you can start rapidly prototyping. Uh, Marley Gray, um, our sort of point of contact and Microsoft's director of uh, capital markets uh, and our, our partner on this, said, we want to help companies fail fast. And if they fail, they pick themselves back up, they iterate. Uh, blockchain is coming. Blockchain is going to... Um, transform the way enterprises run, and you better learn about it if you're a company. So uh, how, how did a small company like yours and like have this big partnership with Microsoft? I, I guess you have been in stealth mode. People didn't know yes. about <laughs> Well, um, so what, what has kind of evolved is that when we started building these tools, we've had some small hackathons. And to our surprise that uh, we've had sort of these internal hackathons or sort of semi-private hackathons. But people have kind of picked up the tools independently. So for example, at the Coindesk hackathon, people started you know, building on our stuff. Um, the winner of the Barclay Rise hackathon built on our application stack. So there's obviously a big demand in the community for an easier way to do blockchain application development. And when we called Microsoft, they were looking exactly for a tool set like that. One of the difficulties, I think, with this space is that um, it's hard enough to get your head around the concepts and the crypto, but most people just want to start putting application logic directly um, into the blockchain as soon as possible. And we provided that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th this Microsoft uh, partnership has spun up uh, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, so Meet to now has been something like two months. Uh, they've been really focused on pushing out um, their stance on the blockchain space. It's been great to work with them. Um, I think that the thing that appealed to them is just uh, how strong the fit is with their cloud platform. Um, it's, it took us 
a very short time to get images uh, put together and provisioned um, for deployment, and you're just up and running after that. And uh, if you saw the presentation yesterday, um, Azure's focused on platform as a service. It's not just you provision a VM, it's they've taken care of all the problems. If you want a VM with our stuff, you launch it. If you want a VM with um, some NoSQL database, it's already built for you. So really, they're trying to take all the complexity out of getting up and running so that people can just build. So, so, so let me get this right. So in order to build a, a decentralized application running on, say, the Ethereum mainnet yeah. or let's say a private chain that, I don't know, maybe a few banks are running in the future. Right, right, right. The kind of tools you, you seem to need are, one of the tools is um, an IDE or uh, basically software that helps debug your uh, Solidity code, tell, yep. tell you what, what the errors are, mm -hmm. et cetera. And the other is a tool by which you can deploy your test chains yep. uh, and have nodes on these chains. Yep. And uh, actually, when you write the Solidity code, deploy it to deploy it to it, see its property in, in properties in the real world. Out of these two sep separate kinds of developer tools, you are really focusing on something that allows deployment easily, yeah. and not the actual tool to help write Solidity code. Is that correct? Uh, actually, we we have tools on all elements of that. I I mean, I think the the most difficult thing that companies or individual developers are wrapping their heads around is. It's not one tool that you need to actually deploy. It's an entire set of tools. So for example, within our tools, we wrap in a wallet, a faucet, um, a blockchain node, a RESTful API, and you know a connector to communicate with that blockchain. So all of that stuff we bundle together. And until you have it all in one simple package, you can't really uh, deploy an application. So that's what we've done. Now, each of those elements that we've created are also separate modules. So for example, let's say you don't want to use our wallet. You have your own wallet that you want to use. You could still use our you know, RESTful API and our um, private blockchain node in order to do that. Our private blockchain node com uh, is completely Ethereum compatible. So if you wanted to use our node in cooperation with, say, Go or C++, that works on that level too. So the tools, we've kind of organized it as kind of an easy way in, but the farther you get along, you can kind of break these apart and use the separate modules in whatever way you want. Mm -hmm. I think our biggest value add is um, at the sort of integration layer, um, just like in sort of object relational management for the, the developers watching, there's an impedance mismatch between, you know, representing data on the blockchain and then representing it in a user interface for people. And kind of the, this confused people tremendously at hackathons and such. So one thing we, we put effort into was just scaffolding an easy way to say wire the front end to the back end where yeah. the back end's Ethereum um, like you would in you know other web development situations. So once you're up and, and running on that, that, that's the big friction that we, we get you through. And you can start to specialize sort of after that. But we want to do the integration, make sure our tools fit in with the existing web. And when you get further along, we can still support you. And you might start breaking things out. But it'll all still work. Yeah. So, so you have like a free offering and an enterprise offering, right? That's correct, yes. And what's the difference between the two? So um, we have several tiers of offerings. Um, the first tier is basically, the free offering is you're running on our hosted private network. Um, the initial offering with Azure is you spin up your own instance, and get, that gives you your own private network, and that's really in, inexpensive. Now, all of these are just sandboxes, so they're single node deployments. For the enterprise offering, we op offer multi-node deployments, full networks, and we also allow them to, we can put them on any of their existing infrastructure. So. Many people are happy to use the Azure cloud and spin up multiple instances there, but some people want some instances on the cloud, some instances you know, hosted on hardware that they control. And we, we have you know, tested our stuff on many different platforms. Okay, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, in the, in the multi-node case, um, just to reiterate, you can imagine you know, uh, if you're a multinational company, um, you may need, you may really need six, eight, 10, 
50 different locations because you've got you know uh, back end data databases you know uh, account records uh, to sync between these and this is a pretty good use case for a blockchain so you really might want to spin up a whole bunch of nodes but if you're in a developer in the prototype phase um, probably you would get the the first option until you started to understand what was going on and then when you wanted to scale up you would add more nodes yeah do you, do you have any 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 competitors today that are doing some something similar I, I think there are a lot of people in the private blockchain space. Um, in the Ethereum particular world, I think we've kind of taken a different approach than everyone else. Our key thing is to sort of uh, integrate and interoperate with existing systems. That's why we chose Rust for API. So, you know, we can easily communicate to existing enterprise systems, existing data structures that they already have. We also built our stuff um, on top of a SQL database so we can pull out you know, our, we're using Postgres. We can pull that out and put in some other form of SQL database pretty seamlessly. And so in that respect, I think, uh, from the other block blockchain companies, we're different because we're focused really on application and business logic on the blockchain and rapidly deploying. Yeah, so it's an interesting space right now. Um, I feel a big uh, difference between the kind of uh, New York companies and the Silicon Valley companies. The Silicon Valley companies seem uh, a little bit more Bitcoin focused and coming at things from uh, less of a direct kind of enterprise focused or, or medium to large scale business focused. They're trying to create new things and definitely disrupt. Um, and there's a lot of value in that. But what we're trying to do is talk to these companies see what problems we can solve kind of in their, their back end processing, their back office, um, and where we can save the money. Okay. And to that extent, um, Ethereum has actually been a, a big jump in functionality over something like Bitcoin because you really do need to automate the business logic in addition to the settlement. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you chose Ethereum because it just allows automation of business logic and is this the reason why Microsoft chose like the Ethereum design as to offer as a blockchain as a service rather than the Bitcoin design? Absolutely. I mean, I think fundamentally the way we look at Ethereum is not as a form of cryptocurrency, um, th though that's one aspect of the overall platform. But ultimately, it's about being an application platform and allowing for you know back office automation and enter automating a lot of these pieces in the you know company puzzle that they want to just make more efficient. And you know they want to turn it into from things that take days to things that take seconds. And having that application logic on the blockchain with all the auditability, with all the historical records, with all you know the immutable data, they were really excited by that. Yeah, to build on that, there are just a lot of situations now that require uh, human intervention to do uh, tasks that seem like they could be automated in, in many cases. Um, just sending uh, money from place to place yeah. in the US, um, Ben Losky once joked that uh, you could probably send it there physically on, on a plane faster. And you know, there's reasons, um, It's sometimes it's purposefully slow because there's compliance and that sort of thing. But uh, a lot of the time you could actually in, encode all the logic uh, into the blockchain itself and this would enforce compliance and uh, in you know nearly all of the cases and provide huge cost savings. Yeah. So, um, so one of the difficulties I think many people have in this space is um, it's easy to understand what Ethereum does as a cryptocurrency. And a lot of people say that it's going to help with back office automation and verification. Mm -hmm. But because most of the people have never actually worked in the financial industry and seen the back office, it's hard for an outsider to uh, understand the applicability of the technology there. Right. Do you have any customers already, and can you give an idea of what kind, what kinds of things these <laughs> blockchains make easy? Uh, I'd love to tell you the list, but um, you know, we're under NDAs at this point. But what I can tell you is, we are actively talking to many, many financial companies, and many of these companies have already spun up innovation labs. And what they're trying to do is. 
they have the knowledge on the financial side. And we are providing tools where they can bring that knowledge and apply all of that business logic onto the blockchain. And that's why we exist. We're not, we're essentially thinking of ourselves as a technology provider, like, you know, think of it like a database company or something like this, as opposed to trying to disrupt their business at this point in time. Yeah, I, I can say that um, common use cases have definitely emerged. We are under NDAs, but um, I've heard the same words many times, and that's given us the sense that the problems are really real, and they're looking for a solution that they can just kind of grab and, and run with. Um, there is a sort of a, a lot of time that'll have to go into integrating their existing, uh, some would call them legacy systems, with this new technology. Everything is going to be very smooth on the new technology, but they have kind of a tapestry of systems they've been using for, for decades now that need to sync with it. So uh, that process really requires uh, a lot of direct uh, communication with, with the domain experts. So where can our listeners find out more about Block Apps? Uh, yeah, uh, come to our website at blockapps.net. Um, we're setting up some education workshops to guide people into our tools. You can find our repos. And um, in the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to find this directly on the Microsoft Azure Marketplace. They're setting up a new blockchain category just for us. Anything to add, Kim? Uh, come and request a demo if uh, you want to get us specifically or email us. Uh, you can find it on the website. Nice to have you on the show. Thank, awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you.